for, I don't know, probably a good 30, 40 minutes here. And uh, figure a good way to wrap up would be a game of Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles, which is particularly interesting on the stream because we played through Gun Survivor. Uh, Gun Survivors 1 and 2, and also Dead Aim, uh, with the sort of, uh, thank you Viper, with the uh, um, PS2, GunCon 1, and GunCon 2. And uh, those were Capcom's first sort of forays into trying to, mit, trying to mesh like light gun uh, gameplay with the Resident Evil survival horror exploration style of gameplay. Um, and uh, yeah, I haven't played this in years. And this will be actually really interesting to kind of process through that lens to kind of see what, uh, what kind of takeaways they have from that uh, using the uh, first person shooter. Uh, style. I'm pretty sure this is on rails with some limited uh, visual range control. Um, but yeah, we're going to take a look at that and I'm uh, going to kind of look at it through those lens. Uh, give me one second, let me click right over. Took me a second to. Oh, where are we? Took me a second to get the uh, the Wii set up for actual Wii functionality. Let's see if that helps any. It really is. Um, <clears throat> more so when you're this close to the screen because there's really no comfortable place I can put the sensor bar because everything on the bottom is blocked. Everything up top is a little too far, uh, a little too awkward. So I have to uh, kind of adjust myself. Welcome to the Umbrella Chronicles. Accessing file number 2498111. One, one, four, nine, R, C. Biohazard. The outbreak occurred in the summer of 1998. It started in the American Midwestern town of Raccoon City and brought hell to Earth. The T-virus was developed... Wesker is such a weird person to narrate this because usually you think of the narrator as somebody who's... Amongst the unsuspecting uh, and I think even in Resident Evil history, kind of just like somebody who's sympathetic to the tragedy of it all. Uh, and to hear Wesker describing it from the ground up is very strange because he is masterminding and you don't really think of him condescending to, uh, to explain his history. Umbrella's mission statement had always been preserving the health of the people. But beneath this bright statement lurked the shadow. Like, who is he talking to, and why is he telling them this? Concerning the outbreak incident in Raccoon City. The truth behind the rise and fall of Umbrella is something to which only a select few are privy. The beginning of the end started on the outskirts of Raccoon City in the Arklay Mountains. That is also a weird beat to end the intro on. Resident Evil, the Umbrella Chronicles. Actually kind of wonder, given the height. Evening Mexican Sting, it's good to see you. Uh, given the height of, uh, maybe if I move this. That we will be less obstructed. How are you tonight? Oh, this is uh, Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles, which is 2007, and that would have been about three years after Dead Aim, which I think was the most recent light gun uh, 
uh, was Capcom's most recent foray into light gun gaming uh, with the Resident Evil series. So this is their next step up. Tired. I'm sorry to hear that, uh, unless it's for good things, and uh, in which case I hope it is. Oh, right! You can level up your weapons in this? This music is very strange and very non-Resident Evil feeling. Uh, I, th I mean, these actually came out after RE4. So... I imagine there might be something they've learned from them, but uh, it's a first-person, like, rail shooter, so I wonder what, if anything, they have learned from that. Here, let me do my due diligence, wrap this around my wrist. Having... It was a stormy night when the leeches overwhelmed Excuse me. Having Express, flung at least one Wii controller around that sent to safety conscious. Reported an emergency, but the announcement was suddenly... I gotta say, as far as, like, like production process goes, the fact that they're theming these things off of games that have already been released and they have all these, like, cutscenes and all this footage, uh, that actually cuts down some of what they need to tell the story. They just reuse it. Stars here. Is anybody there? Stars here. Is anybody there? This is a very different intro than they uh, than they have at RE Zero. I don't know if he swings down and kicks him like that. I don't know. It seems like a much more RE Four action. Billy escaped prisoner. Um, Billy Cohen. Can we put a hold on the whole arresting me thing? We have bigger things to worry about. I don't know, right Mexican now. Sting. Billy start with a magnum. Jeez. <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm doing this. Shake the Wii remote to reload the gun. look direction with uh yeah with that yeah well it's interesting uh that like thinking about this is like a twin snakes approach to re lore it's almost like um they're going back and rewriting them using the re4 kind of dynamism uh i don't know that's neat i also i, I really like how the uh next cursor or the next icon is the two different colors of the Umbrella logo swapping back and forth. I think that's cool. Fine. We'll worry about that later. For now, we're just safety. That'll be easier said than done. I really like the, uh, the, the drag on the reticle when you flick it around. Let's head upstairs. One of the weird things about They're on the stairs too. Uh of the uh 
the re remaster of Zero is that you can play as Wesker, I believe. It's moving. Who's driving this thing? How the hell would I know? You better go find out. Thinking about how the UI has changed from the light gun games, I'm not sure how I feel about having the ammo um, information kind of condensed around the reticle like that. I found it kind of easier to track with my peripheral vision when the bullets were lined up at the bottom um, of the screen. So I don't know, we'll see how that plays out. Oh wait, how do I do a grenade? Like this. Yeah, no, I um, I think that when this came out at the time, I was excited by it because I thought like, oh, cool, I like Resident Evil Can, and this will give me new insight into uh, into the lore and things like that uh, in a very nerdy way. But uh, uh, and I was a little disappointed at the time because it did seem like an re fortification of uh, some of the more grounded games. But now I actually am interested in it from a different angle, which is in the lineage that it, you know, that it falls into as being a, a Resident Evil light gun game. Which it seems like, it sounds like they're, it looks like they're abandoning uh, a lot of the experiments that they ran on the gun con. And uh, taking exploration out of it completely and just making it a rail shooter. Which in this case kind of works because the, the stories are already written. You already know what's going to happen because the canon is already done. Uh, on these uh, on these installments or chapters in the Resident Evil lore, so having it on rails, uh, I guess there really isn't anything to explore or discover in the story. So having it on rails kind of works. Fully cloned RE4 with Rebecca and Billy. Do you mean like in the RE0 scenario? Oh wow. That is an RE4 sound effect right there. What's going on here? Beats me. Never seen anything like this. I'll say my aim is much less good with this than it is with the uh, with the actual gun peripheral. Yeah, I love the train scenario in RE0.
Objects destroyed? I'm actually not even aware I was destroying any objects. Okay, so they do, I mean, I don't, wouldn't call it exploration, but it is a little bit of path, uh, some adventure gaming here. This is absolutely different music than I would hear anywhere else in Resident Evil, even action packed RE4. I just save your ass back there. You still want to arrest me? Yeah, for a rookie, Rebecca is armed to the teeth. Oh, oh wait, the counterattack only works if they grab me. Probably should have been doing that. I mean, if you break out of an MP's, uh, an MP's watch, then, uh, maybe taking a few of their, uh, a few of their ammo caches doesn't seem like a bad idea. Boss time. The music has chilled out quite a bit.
kind of nuts that the uh, the dodge prompt is button mashing rather than uh, the timing based. That first aid spray is really going to save me. Yep. I think, uh, weren't some of the ladder enemies in, um, in Remake, uh, Insect POWs? Oh, there are files to obtain. Yeah, I heard a lot of RE4 sound effects in this. Like that right there. Yeah, it is. It is a neat, funky take on the save theme, isn't it? Let's see, so it's eleven, eleven. We could probably do one more. Actually, I'm curious. What does Rebecca's arsenal look like? She starts with a submachine gun. Oh, I guess she can start with either one. I feel pretty good about the boomstick myself. What is a uh, what is a filtered super saw? Sanri biological weapon? Is that, I guess that's the, uh, the name of the, uh, scorpion. I'm also interested that they have switched up narration techniques. This is no longer, uh, Wesker telling us what's going on, but a, uh, uh, kind of an archivist typing up a diary. It's funny, it's like, like, like her face hit you? the pavement, I'm and that's sure. very funny. I can see the entrance. All right, I'm heading to the mansion right now. We'll rendezvous there. Roger. So I'm guessing you need a bodyguard, right? No. Do you? Yeah, kind of also in the RE4 vein, I think they're, uh, they're sort of, uh, reluctant cooperator trash talk is a little more... A little more on the sassy side, Leon style. Oh, 
Oh, nifty. Rebecca starts with a samurai edge. It's nuts, to, it's nuts to see them going through these spaces uh, without any loading time because in my brain from uh, from playing these games uh, in their original adventure game form I'm used to these being I'm used to these smaller areas feeling so much bigger, precisely because I'm spending so much time thinking about them as uh, as places I've entered, you know, specifically with a load screen and everything. Uh, but seeing them all connected like this actually makes them seem much smaller than they felt when I played it in the adventure game. It's interesting to me, yeah, with the knife effect, they didn't really change the graphics up. They just, uh... It's the same image. Either way. management training facility. The first general manager, James Marcus. You know him? Just the name. He's been dead for some time now. Friendly looking guy. Even dead, he has quite a presence. Mighty Leech. Power is life. Billy, up there. Not this way. Here. Yeah, right. Honestly, it's more fun to swipe these things with a knife than it is to, uh, to shoot them. The knife is a really good idea. We're going through! Yeah, leechmen are, uh, are especially unnerving here. They move at a slower frame rate than everything else. Or maybe that's just the game slowing down. No! I think, I mean, it is, it is obviously another mansion. But I think it's uh, supposed to technically be a training center. Where Umbrella employees go before they, uh... Before they go to the Arclay Mansion lab. Something strange about the movements, uh, about Billy's and Rebecca's movements here, because they are moving so much more slowly, as though they do have the opportunity to just plug infinite bullets. Oh, weird. Black and white washout with the colors here. Uh, as they do have infinite bullets in the face of these zombies. 
We have to find another way. Yeah, let's go back. enemies in the main game. Thank you. Billy, I'm sorry, but I have to know. Did you really kill 23 people? We were ordered to attack the village. don't justify slaughtering innocent people. So, what happened in that village? You can't talk about it, can you? <laughs> what good would it do? It won't change the past. If you don't want to talk about it, I'll understand. But I'm not afraid of you anymore. I'm an escaped fugitive, remember? Didn't they tell you I was dangerous? Yes, they did. Billy, I gotta be honest, this is kind of the premise of 90% of our conversation up to this point. Oh wow, somebody but we have hung the chandelier back up. Survival first. It's interesting that the uh, chandelier got hung back up because I don't think there was a save point in between the two, which is usually what I would view as like the, uh, you know, the mark. It's interesting, I don't think there is a penalty for, uh, for reloading when you run out, which I would expect, uh, usually, I'm used to there being a penalty of, uh, you know, if you're not paying attention and you need to reload like that, uh, like a longer reload time or something. Typing of the dead was pretty great.
Wasn't Typing of the Dead, uh, that was, that was, when you say mod, uh, do you mean like, uh, uh, an unofficial mod? Because I thought that that was, uh, like an unofficial release. There we go. Okay. Thought so. Yeah, how, uh, Typing of the Dead was, uh, was very fun. That's taking a while. How are they making it through that shotgun spray? Let's, uh, uh, yes. All right, do it one more time. Yeah, for light gun shooters, I don't think anything can beat the, uh, nothing can beat the light gun experience. <clears throat> that they would go down so easily with just a handgun. Oh, maybe I should have saved that. And also maybe grab the grenades to my right. But I can't look that far over. Watching. What was I watching? It was something that was said in the 80s, and uh, there was, of course, an arcade scene, and I paused it to identify the, the games that were in there. And I remember seeing Operation Wolf, which I remember having a great time playing that with my dad. These things are just as awful in this game as they were in the original. God, I hate them. <laughs> Is there a first aid spray over here? Oh, I know there's a first aid spray over there just out of my reach.
Uh, the pedal thing, was that the, uh, like, crouch, take cover, uh, command? Ugh, this smells like the zoo. Yeah. I think I have Time Crisis 2 for the GunCon 2. Which might be fun to stream. There's a way I can level up the, uh... Oh, thank goodness. I can level up the, uh... Samurai Edge so that it shoots a little quicker. Go through the doors? <laughs> we made it outside. Are you alright, Rebecca? Yeah. Something's coming! Oh no, there was a health item there I wanted. Asking the same thing about this camera. There we go. Oh no, I did not want to throw that out. Well, I think this falls into the, uh, the, uh, area where we just kind of assume that this might actually be the best possible life for everybody involved in Resident Evil because this is the only response they have to anything.
love this invocation that I'm hanging on with one arm and firing at him with the other. That is uh, definitely not the Rebecca Chambers we know from the uh, tank control Resident Evil Zero. Gotcha. Stars, man. Even their rookies can fend off a giant bioweapon bat with one arm as they hang on to a ladder on the third floor for dear life. That gets us through the uh, first part of the Resident Evil Zero. Uh, let's see. Resident Evil Missions. Let's see if we can save this real fast here. Oh, I guess it auto saved, so we're fine. So, yeah. Anyway, everybody, thanks for coming out to the stream tonight. Uh, we're going to pick up with the Legacy of Cain games uh, next weekend. Going to do Soul Reaver 2, which is, uh, I believe, considered the worst of the series. But it also contains a lot of that fantastic voice acting intermediate level vocabulary and uh, good good old angsty time travel do I have free will uh, noodling uh, storyline so anyway thanks for streaming uh, thanks for streaming thank you for coming out <laughs> and uh, hopefully see you on Tuesday where we're going to be doing part three of Resident Evil 4 so yeah have a great night and Mexican Sting I hope you feel better buddy